Good evening students, uh, let us start the equations of motion for an object having constant acceleration. This is most important in your kinematics. There are four equations of motion for constant acceleration and they are point number one. V is equal to U plus AT and the second equation is S is equal to UT plus half AT square. Third equation is V square is equal to U square plus 2AS and the fourth one is S NF is equal to u plus u plus a by 2 into 2n minus 1. So let me explain you what are these equations are and what are the terms associated in that equation and what are the, means all the terminology associated here and all the symbols they represent. This equation is relating actually suppose if you consider an object which is moving in a straight line and having initial velocity means at time t is equal to 0 whatever be the velocity that is called your initial velocity and after a certain period of time t its velocity becomes v so u is your initial velocity v is your final velocity t is the time span and a is the acceleration so the first equation relates this quantity final velocity initial velocity acceleration and time suppose if an accelerating object or an object which is moving with a constant acceleration then after certain period of time what is it its final velocity if its initial velocity is u and in this equation the extra term is your s s is what it is the distance covered by an object with initial speed u after time interval t if that object has an acceleration a so only s here stands for distance covered got and this is the third equation it relates final velocity initial velocity acceleration and distance covered got this equation is quite important to understand because up to your standard 9th or 10th these three equations are known to you but this equation is unknown to understand this let us understand the terminology here here is nth means distance covered in the nth second got here n is the total time span for which the object is in motion what is that suppose let us take an example at t is equal suppose an object is moving in this path this is the position of an object at t is equal to 0 the position of the object is changing with the passage of time let the object that these points they represent the position of the object at different time instances so at this point t is equal to 1 second at this, at, the, at this point t is equal to 2 second at this point t is equal to 3 second and at this point t is equal to 4 second here t is equal to t is equal to 5 second so here is the journey of an object in between time t is equal to 0 to t is equal to 5 second in this case if you consider your n will be your 5 means total time for which the object is in motion and you use your initial speed a is acceleration a is nth means it is the distance covered in the last second last second means what this 
is the distance which is covered in the last second means in between 4 second and 5 second whatever be the distance covered that is in this case it is called your s nth or I can write here as fifth try to understand this is the distance covered by the object in the first second this is the distance covered by the object in the second second and this is the distance covered by the object in the third second try to understand in the second second it is the distance covered by the object between first and second similarly in the third second it is the distance covered by the object in between two t is equal to two second to three second similarly your distance covered in nth second it means between n minus 1 to n time whatever be the distance covered that is called your s nth so now these are the equations we need to prove by using your calculus so let us start with the first equation let us start with the first equation so you write down these quantities u is the initial velocity v is the final velocity the time span time starts from 0 and it ends at t so when the time is 0 the speed is u and when the means time is t the final velocity is v and acceleration is a your first equation is what it is we need to prove v is equal to u plus a t we know that your acceleration is given by dv on dt what which implies dv is, is equal to a dt if the acceleration is the derivative of your velocity then we can get the velocity in this case by integrating the equation it is just the opposite of your derivative so what I have done after cross multiplying I have just integrated in the term now let us take the proper limit you see right side here acceleration is constant because all the equations of motion that is applicable when the acceleration is constant try to understand here as the acceleration is constant so right side is a function of time and the left side is a function of velocity the time starts from 0 and ends at t so the limits of time will be the lower limit will be t and a lower limit will be 0 and the upper limit will be t now when the time is 0 the corresponding limit of your velocity it is u and the final velocity is v which implies integration of dv will be your v simply because of the formula like integration of dx is x got integration of dt is t in the same case integration of dv will be v limit from u to v which is equal to acceleration into constant it will be taken out of the integration so you got integration of dt 0 to t which implies now you can put the limit formula means your upper limit means definite integration formula instead of this you are going to put the upper limit v minus lower limit so v minus u is equal to a and integration of dt is your t again the limit is from 0 to t which implies v minus u will be equals to a is a constant now instead of this function you put the upper limit which is your t minus lower limit 0 so which implies v minus u is equal to a t or which implies v is equal to u plus a t so this equation is proved now means the first equation I have proved by the method of your calculus or by using your integration now come to your second equation your second equation what I have written that is your s is equal to ut 
plus half a t square. Right? This equation is relating your displacement, your velocity and acceleration. So in this case, it is better to start with this equation because displacement is there. We know v is equal to v is equal to dx by dt here x is the position got and we know which implies you can cross multiply dx is equal to v dt dx is what displacement v just now in our previous equation I just proved it v is equal to u plus a t I can put it here so which implies dx is equal to u plus a t into d t. Now we can take the proper limit of integration. Right side is a function of time, left side is a function of displacement. This equation is actually relating displacement of an object after time interval t, which implies arc means the time limit starts from time limit starts from 0 to t got and the displacement limit which is your x limit starts from 0 to s means when time t is equal to 0 the value of x is equal to 0 means it has started from the origin and after time t the object has moved a distance s got so the, we can write the limit of, of time here 0 to t and the corresponding limit of your displacement will be from 0 to s. Now which implies, see integration of dx, integration of dx is nothing but your x, the limit is 0 to s, which is equal to see, two terms are added, so we need to integrate them separately, 0 to t u dt plus 0 to t a t dt what and this left side will be you can apply the definite integration rule so instead of this x you need to put the upper limit s minus lower limit so s minus 0 will be the first term this u is your initial velocity means when the time t is equal to 0 whatever be the velocity that is your initial velocity Remember, initial velocity is a constant in this integration. So, as it is a constant, you can take it outside. Why it is a constant? Because initial velocity means at time t is equal to 0, the velocity what it is there, that will be constant throughout. It cannot change later, later on. Huh? So, that's a, that can be treated as a constant. So, you can take it out of the integration and you will be getting 0 to t only dt. Plus, here acceleration is constant because in all the equations acceleration will be constant. A will be taken out 0 to t t dt. Here the power of t is 1. Now which implies your left side is s minus u which is equal to s and here it is u and integration of dt will be your t limit is 0 to t plus as acceleration is constant it will be taken out t to the power 1 is there so the formula I will put x to the power n dx integration which is x to the power n plus 1 by n plus 1 the same way same formula here t to the power 1 is there t to the power 1 plus 1 by 1 plus 1 the limit will be from 0 to t which implies s is equal to u instead of this t put the upper limit capital T this this t minus this lower limit so don't confuse between these two because already I have taken this t you can take it to be n so in your equations u n plus half a n square it can be taken as in general we are taking the function to be dt and the time to be t so there is a confusion here so don't confuse it's a function so this is the they are the limits but 
So t minus 0 plus a into this is t square by 2 and which I got s is equal to ut plus half a t square. So this is the second equation I have proved. But this equation is your second equation. Now let us come to your third equation. The third equation is what? The third equation of motion for constant acceleration is what? That is your v square minus q square is equal to 2as. v square minus u square is equal to 2as. See, in this term there is no time. Yes, there is no time term, means it is a time independent term. But we know velocity is dx by dt and acceleration is dv by dt. So if we, if we take these two equations, both are time dependent. But this equation is time independent. So to make it time independent, what we need to do? We need to take out the time here. Got? This equation a is equal to dv by dt. So if you do, you can do one thing like just you divide this equation with that equation. So v upon a. So if you divide v upon a, v by a, this equation, v by a, which you are going to get, v is your what? dx by dt into, this will be dt by dv. Good. So v by a is equal to dx by dt into dt by dv. If you divide out, you can solve it another way like, which is dx by dt divided by dv by dt. Now you can get that equation like dx by dt into dt by dv. dt dt got cancelled, so I will be getting which implies v upon a is equal to dx upon dv. So which implies v dv is equal to a dx. So now you see this equation, there is no time dependent term. But, and we can take the proper limit of the, you can integrate this, uh, both the side of this equation by taking proper limit. Left side is a function of your velocity, right side is a function of your position. Your position starts, if you take, starts from the origin, then position will start from 0 and ends at A, S. And when the position is at 0, means time will be at 0 there. So, if time will be 0, whatever the velocity, that is called your initial velocity u and the final velocity is v. Now, I can integrate it. You can see, power of v is 1, your acceleration is constant. So, which implies, I can write, power of v is 1. So, the formula is v to the power 1 plus 1 by 1 plus 1. And the limit will be from u to v which is equal to, as acceleration is constant, that is taken out of the integration, integration of dx 0 to s. So, which implies is equal to v square by 2 limit u to v, which is equal to a and integration of dx is x limit 0 to s, which implies this equation will be Instead of this v square, you need to put, means instead of this v, you need to put capital V minus u because that is your formula for, of your definite integration. Means instead of this v, you put v square by 2 minus put u square by 2, which is equal to again here a, instead of this x, you put s minus 0 formula for definite integration I have applied here which implies 
you can take v square minus u square by 2 is equal to a into s or which implies v square minus u square is equal to 2as or which implies v square is equal to u square plus 2as. So this is your another equation of motion v square is equal to u square plus 2as that is the third equation of motion. Now the last equation the last equation of motion that is a simple one already you knew it but last equation of motion is what s nth which is equal to u plus a by 2 into 2a minus 1 this that equation we need to prove so to prove that equation already i have explained you the thing now let us understand the concept suppose here the time t is equal to 0 what and suppose the object is moving here in this path let's say this is the point where t is equal to n minus 1 and this is the point where t is equal to n so we need to calculate s nth s nth means what this distance is called your s nth what so s nth is what means it is we can say this is your s n minus 1 and this is s n means s n minus in, uh, 1 is what it is a distance covered in n minus 1 second s n is what it is a distance covered in n second what means when t is equal to n the object is here so the total distance whatever covered is called your is m at n minus 1 second the object is here so means you can take that this is a and this is b object is at a so whatever distance is covered that is called your s n minus 1 and you see your s nth is what it is nothing but s n minus s n minus 1 that you remember this equation we can proceed as the equation number 2 equation number 2 is your s is equal to simply ut plus half a t square the proceedings of this equation and this equation are same but so we will start from this v is equal to dx by dt which implies dx is equal to v dt which implies you can take the integration both side but so as it is a function of time it will be 0 to t and it is 0 to s but but this equation try to understand this is the process what we have followed while solving the equation number 2 but try to understand the concept here here we need to calculate the distance between a and b means the time span is from n minus 1 to t is equal to n but so on the left side it is from s n minus 1 to s n so instead of these two limits here what we will do in this case so instead of this we will take for this expression your limit would be from dx means because we need to find out s n th it is the distance between s n minus s minus s n minus 1 so which is nothing but s n minus 1 to s n in between these two positions we need to find out the value of your distance covered and for the time what you need to take the time span is from n minus 1 to n so here it is n minus 1 to n v dt v dt if you integrate then you can find the answer see this is the only difference between s is equal to s is equal to ut plus half a t square s is equal to ut plus half a t square the proceedings are same only you see between this equation and this equation the proceedings are same b is equal to x by dt 
but the limits in this equation is 0 to s and here it is 0 to t but in this for this equation the limit will be s n minus 1 to s n and the limit n minus 1 to n that is the only difference now i can solve this and you see here v is equal to u plus at i can substitute here which implies integration s n minus 1 to s n dx which is equal to integration n minus 1 to n for v i can write v is equal to u plus at dt now that equation becomes i can write here which implies integration of dx will be your x and the limit will be from s n minus 1 to s n which is equal to in this case see there are two terms you can integrate it separately so which is n minus 1 to n u dt plus integration of n minus 1 to n a t dt which implies in this case you can apply the definite integration so which is s n minus s n minus 1 which is equal to now on the right side you see u is a constant of integration you can take, in, take, in, take it out and which is integration of dt limit n minus 1 to n plus here acceleration is a constant which will be taken out t to the power 1 dt limit n minus 1 to n which implies this term is n minus s n minus 1 is nothing but your s n f already i have told you in your that graph means diagram which is equal to u is a constant u is a constant already taken integration of dt will be your t limit n minus 1 to n plus here it is your acceleration t to the power 1 is there means formula t to the power 1 plus 1 by 1 plus 1 this is the formula i have applied here for integration n minus 1 to n is the limit now which implies i can write is nth is equal to u now i can apply the definite rule integration rule so instead of this t you need to put n minus instead of this t put n minus 1 so put it in bracket n minus 1 plus 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 so it is t square by 2 so you can take common a by 2 and here the limit is t square limit n minus 1 to n which implies s nth will be u all into n minus open the bracket minus n plus 1 plus a by 2 whole into instead of this t put n so means n square minus instead of this t put n minus 1 so which is n minus 1 whole square now i can solve this equation like in this case s nth will be and then got cancelled in this case so s nth is equal to so which implies s nth is equal to u plus it is a by 2 all into n square minus n minus from whole square because as it is minus is there so the terms whatever comes inside the bracket will be negative so it will be n square plus 2n minus 1 so n square n square were cancelled so which implies s nth is equal to u plus a by 2 into 2n minus 1 so this is the required formula so these are the derivations of your equations of motion for constant acceleration Remember students, these are the equation which is applicable when acceleration is constant. But 
when acceleration is a constant then only we can apply that kind of equation to find out the different parameters thank you